Hello everyone. Welcome to UIAS. Let's discuss today's prelims topics. Question 1 with reference to the recently formulated National Mission on Natural Farming NMNF, consider the following statements. 1. To motivate farmers to adopt chemical-free farming and enhance the reach of natural farming. 2. Formed as a separate and independent scheme from 2023 to 1924 by upscaling the Bharatiya Prakritik Krishi Paddati, BPKP. 3. Natural farming is a way of chemical-free farming based on desi cow and locally available resources with no chemical fertilizers and pesticides and promotes traditional indigenous practices. Which of the following given above is our correct? A. 2 only B. 1 and 3 only C. 1, 2 and 3 D. 2 and 3 only The answer is C. The success of NMNF will require a behavioral change in farmers to shift from chemical-based inputs to cow-based locally produced inputs and thus requires continuous creation of awareness, training, hand-holding, and capacity building of farmers in the initial years. Natural farming is a way of chemical-free farming based on desi cow and locally available resources with no chemical fertilizers and pesticides and promotes traditional indigenous practices which give freedom to farmers from externally purchased inputs and is largely based on on-farm biomass recycling with major stress on biomass mulching, use of on-farm desi cow dung urine formulation, managing pests through diversity, on-farm botanical concoctions and exclusion of all synthetic chemical inputs directly or indirectly and emphasis is given on improving natural nutrient cycling and increase in organic matter in the soil, which can help with climate change resilience and carbon sequestration in soils. Question to consider the following statements about the International Day of Zero Waste. 1. The world marked the first-ever International Day of Zero Waste on 31st March 2023. To the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, and UN Human Settlements Programme, UNHABITAT, established the day in response to the worsening impacts of waste on human health, the economy, and the environment. 3. The International Day of Zero Waste aims to bring the myriad impacts of waste to the world's attention and encourage global action at all levels to reduce pollution and waste. Which of the following given above is our correct? A. 1 and 2 only B. 1 and 3 only C. 1, 2 and 3 D. 2 and 3 only The answer is D. The world marked the first-ever International Day of Zero Waste on 30th March 2023. Promoting Zero Waste initiatives can help advance all the goals and targets in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including Sustainable Development Goal 11 on making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and Sustainable and Unmandated Sustainable Development Goal 12 on Ensuring Sustainable Consumption and Production Patterns. Question 3. Consider the following statements about the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act UAPA. 1. Its main objective was to make powers available for dealing with activities directed against the integrity and sovereignty of India. 2. UAPA is also known as the Anti-Terror Law. 3. UAPA does not criminalize membership in an unlawful organization. Which of the following given above is our correct? A. 1 and 2 only B. 1 and 3 only C. 1, 2 and 3 D. 3 only The answer is A. According to the UAPA, if the declaration in the Centre's Gazette notification is confirmed by the Tribunal in its order, the same will remain in force for five years from the date on which the notification becomes effective. It says that the Centre may on its own or an application by any aggrieved person, at any time, 
cancel the notification whether or not its declaration is confirmed by the tribunal. Section 10 of the UAPA criminalize membership in an unlawful organization. It says that being a member of such an organization would be punishable with imprisonment of two years and may extend to life imprisonment or even death in certain circumstances. The 2019 amendment of the law has made it possible for the union government to designate individuals as terrorists without due process of law. Question 4 with reference to gravitational lensing, consider the following statements. 1. It is the name given to the phenomenon where a foreground object, a galaxy or a black hole bends the light from a more distant object behind it, magnifying it in the process. 2. Gravitational lenses can create phenomena in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, but two of the most well-known are the Einstein cross and the Einstein ring. 3. It provides more information about foreground objects and gives astronomers a tool to see where the dark matter must lie, based on its effects on the background galaxies. Which of the following given above is are correct? A. 1 and 2 only. B. 1 only. C. 1, 2 and 3. D. 2 and 3 only. The answer is C. Question 5. Consider the following statements about black hole. 1. A.M. Black hole is a place in space where gravity is so strong that even light cannot escape its pull. 2. The gravity in black holes is so strong because matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. 3. Black holes are always too big in size. Which of the following given above is are correct? A. 1 and 2 only. B. 1 only. C. 1, 2 and 3. D. 2 and 3 only. The answer is A. Black holes can be big or small. Scientists think the smallest black holes are as small as just one atom. These black holes are very tiny but have the mass of a large mountain. Mass is the amount of matter or stuff in an object. Another kind of black hole is called stellar. Its mass can be up to 20 times more than the mass of the sun. There may be many, many stellar mass black holes in Earth's galaxy. Earth's galaxy is called the Milky Way. Its mass can be up to 20 times more than the mass of the sun. There may be many, many stellar mass black holes in Earth's galaxy. Earth's galaxy is called the Milky Way. The largest black holes are called supermassive. Question 6 with reference to gamma ray bursts, GRBs, consider the following statements. 1. They are short-lived bursts of gamma ray light, the most energetic form of light. 2. They last only for a few milliseconds, GRBs shine hundreds of times brighter than a typical supernova and about a million trillion times as bright as the sun. 3. When a GRB erupts, it is briefly the brightest source of cosmic gamma ray photons in the observable universe. Which of the following given above is are correct? A. 2 only. B. 1 and 3 only. C. 1, 2 and 3. D. 2 and 3 only. The answer is B. They last anywhere from a few milliseconds to several minutes. GRBs shine hundreds of times brighter than a typical supernova and about a million trillion times as bright as the sun. Question 7. Consider the following statements about Afindex 2023. 1. The Africa India Field Training Exercise Afindex 2023. To the second edition of the Joint Military Exercise was recently culminated at Foreign Training Node, Pond, Jaslamar. 3. The multinational military drill was aimed at promoting the idea of Africa India militaries for regional unity, Amrit, and focused on incorporating the current dynamics of UN peacekeeping forces, UNPKF, through practical and comprehensive discussions and tactical exercises. Which of the following given above is are correct? 
A. One and two only. B. One and three only. C. One, two and three. D. Three only. The answer is B. The second edition of the joint military exercise was recently culminated at Foreign Training Node, Pond, Pune. Question 8 with reference to salt marshes, consider the following statements. 1. Salt marshes are coastal wetlands that are flooded and drained by salt water brought in by the tides. 2. They are marshy because the soil may be composed of deep mud and peat. 3. Sea level rise is the most important threat to salt marshes. Which of the following given above is our correct? A. 1 and 2 only. B. 3 only. C. 1, 2 and 3. D. 2 and 3 only. The answer is C. Peat is made of decomposing plant matter that is often several feet thick. Peat is waterlogged, root filled, and very spongy. Because salt marshes are frequently submerged by tides and contain a lot of decomposing plant material, oxygen levels in the peat can be extremely low a condition called hypoxia. Hypoxia is caused by the growth of bacteria which produce the sulfurous rotinic smell that is often associated with marshes and mud flats. Marshes all over the globe experience coastal squeeze where their movement is obstructed by sea level rise, anthropogenic activities, and geographical factors. For instance, a seawall that protects a home from inundation will prevent a wetland from naturally migrating to higher ground. Thank you, everyone. Do subscribe to this channel. Use code SPLIVE to join an academy.